It's Friday morning, and it's time for relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons. And I hesitated a moment because I wanted to make sure everything is working, and it looks like it is. So that's that's good. It says it's online. It says it's recording. The music is playing. Uh, the camera's on the right places. Well, so no excuses this morning. Well, there was an excuse. Um, somebody had used my workshop area here for something that needed to be done yesterday and uh, I could have streamed me cleaning it up I could have started on time and shown me picking it up and then disappearing and coming back with it clean but I thought well no I don't know why I thought no I don't know maybe it wasn't that wouldn't have been as interesting as me telling you about it um, well, what I'm going to be working on today, uh, eventually I'll get around to it, is uh, Quetzalcoatl. This is this is the model. It was done on the rosin printer across the hall. Let me just move this out of the way. Oh, there we go. There. There's a white background. High-tech stuff here. There. So that's it. It's highly detailed. It's got all sorts of feather detail on the wings. It's got um, weird little feathery detail on the tail. Part of which I see now is a printing flaw that, ooh, that's going to be really, yeah, it is a nice print, isn't it? There's a little bit little bit of extra plastic right there that is on an incredibly fragile place and it really can't stay there so I'm going to try to take that off without breaking it um, this has already been broken uh, you can't really see it hopefully but this feather here had come off as I tried to clean it uh, before I primed it um, but that that little nub in there really needs to come off, so I'm going to try to file it off without breaking off any of the delicate feathers. And then it's got all these detailed things around the head. The uh, It's supposed to end up looking kind of like this. I'm not sure how close I will get. The This is one where the colors are all really nicely blended together, so it looks like the basic color scheme is that it's blue, like on the back and the top of the wings, and that it fades into kind of a yellowish color into a reddish orange. And then on the tail, you know, the little feathers, all these little feathers are kind of this yellowish orange color. And then somehow or other, the spikes around its head are supposed to be like multicolored as well even though they're tiny so i'm going to do my best with this do my best to try to make this end up looking like this so we'll see um this one this one is a little more cartoonish this is kind of like how i actually paint things right but it's the same sort of thing the bluish purple going through the green to the yellow to the red so this this makes it you know this would be easier to paint but I'm going to try to I'm going to try my best to not have just harsh demarcation lines but to do some shading and we'll see how that goes so the first thing is to try to take that off that flaw which I didn't see until just now so I'll apologize for that. Uh, so I'm going to go get a file. I don't want to try to cut it off um, with like an X-Acto knife or something because the just the little pressure from the blade, you know, unless it were like a, a laser blade that would ablate it. I don't happen to have a laser blade handy here. Um, yeah, it would definitely break things there's a chance that if I very very carefully file it or maybe sand it that I can get it off without breaking it
You're kidding now. So we'll see how this goes. Is that the file I wanted? I think I turned the wrong one. Well, let me try the file first. I'm not sure. It's a very finely fine-toothed file, but even that might be, it might catch it too much. It could take, this could take the entire stream. That would be kind of neat, and I won't have to try to paint it. If it takes the entire stream to get this little printing flaw filed off. Um, so after I do this, and then probably, I don't know if I have to or not, I might have to uh, glue it back on if I break it off. It is slowly coming off, it's changing color as I'm rubbing through the uh, primer paint. It's too bad that it's in such a visible place, but it's right on the tail feather. And it will show really badly once it's painted. It's to come off. Half the size as it was before, so, you know, but another, another long time. I really want the round file, though, I think. After I'm done cleaning this off, I will do a flip. Actually, do six flips, so I will do six flips. And then I will start to pick through the paints that are all piled up here on the workbench way back there instead of being put away i think what i'll do is i'll since the paints are just all scattered all over the place and they've made a mess is i will actually show you by moving the camera around and probably giving everybody motion sickness I'll show you just what a mess I have made over the last three weeks, really, in terms of not putting paints away. And then I will show you the thing into which they should have been put, which is a really cool custom-made uh, paint storage holder that Alexis designed, our DM, designed and printed on the PLA 3D printers behind me. Well, I know plastic is coming off because it's showing up on the file. Still, this flaw is still showing, though it is much diminished. So if I keep doing this for just a little while yet, yeah, I'm sorry about this, but it really needs to come off. It, it is an, an ugly little blob of rosin right on the base of the feathers on the tail right in the front of the model where they would show I mean really show and I have to just be barely touching it with the file because it's a very very fragile part and this uh particular rosin is brittle. This is this is the kind of thing that happens when you trying to make a model look good before painting it. 
And then uh, with my lack of painting skill, who knows? Who knows what will happen at that point? Gosh. Down here. It's getting to where I can't really see it. Which is good because I want it to get to the point where you can't see it. Um, we're expecting a really important call because we're having an appliance delivered. And if the call isn't answered, then they won't deliver it and then they'll charge extra and all. And so, if they call the house phone, I hope someone answers it. And if they call my cell phone, I have to take a sudden break. Well, I'd say this thing is, it's a, like about 75% gone. This last little bit is being um, difficult. Almost to the point where it can't really be seen. This was not, this was not a uh, planned part of the, there. I don't know if you can tell that it's gone now. We should have, you know, a micro photograph of the uh, before and after, but there was this, a protuberance there on the edge of that feather that would have been highly visible on this otherwise very nicely done print. I probably should put these away, but then I'd be wandering off screen again. So I'm going to set this carefully aside, carefully, and get a thing to flip. Get these all out. I had my flipping things out. Yes, on Wednesday. Oh. You know, it's one thing when I get down here and, and make a mess of everything, which I do. It's another one someone else uses it because their mess is different than the mess I would make. Okay, So I can kind of make my way through the mess I make, but now I'm trying to make my way through the mess somebody else made. There they are, way up here. Weird. Okay. Hmm. Stick with the with the dot on it has disappeared. Now I've got one without a dot dot. So this this is actually an, an important thing is uh, in order to tell which way the it ended up with the flip. It has to have a dot on it because then there's the dot and the not dot side. I think I'm going to um, flip the paint. Okay, we have either paint. I can move this down now. I had this way up high on Wednesday because I was working on the submarine hull, which is like that big. And I wanted to get as much of it on camera as I could. Uh, but the thing I'm working on now is pretty small. So I'll move this down and in the way and, and see how it goes. Anyway, this has a paint on one side and nothing on the other. So if I get four out of six not paints, then I'll just end the stream and just not bother painting today. One paint, one to one, two not paints, nope, that one. It's like if the die falls out of a trail, tray. It's tied two to two, three, I guess I'm gonna end up painting. Yep, four paints and two not paints. So unfortunately for everybody out there, um, I'm going to continue with the relaxing painting of Dyson Dungeons. So after successfully not breaking this while getting that little flaw filed off, 
I'm now going to attempt to attach this to the sticky tack holder without breaking it. Yes, it's attached. Okay, and then, um, oh, that was just a bad idea. I'm gonna have to lay it down carefully. This is this is the kind of thing I've done before. All the paints, okay, all of the paints are not put away. They are all piled up there in a jumble. So it's like this color, this color, this color. Where should I do it? I should put it away. But no, I put it away when you can just stick it up there out of the, you know, out of the way, but a jumble. So what I almost did is I've done this before as I, you know, set this down here like this. Out of so when I reached over to look for paints, I would knock it over. And because there's all these little fragile bits on it, it would have shattered and probably broke like three or four pieces off and they go flying. I can say this with certainty because this has actually happened before where I've knocked one over and sent pieces flying. Um, yeah. So because I need to reach over there for all those paints to try to find colors that are sort of like this, um, I'm just going to set this down like this and actually put it off to the side a little bit. So if you're wondering, this this is the one I broke. Um, by I had it on a stand like that, and I knocked it over, and the bottom of the bow and the arrowhead both it fell face forward and I thought, oh, that's, you know, it's still at one piece and then I lifted it up and this was missing and that was missing and they were really missing. They went like flying and I found the, it took a while while I was crawling around on the floor here in the workshop. Um, I sort of miraculously found the bottom of the bow, which is good because that would have been very hard to reconstruct. Um, about a foot and a half away. It just went flying. The arrowhead never found. So that's a replacement made out of a toothpick. In fact, it's the second replacement made out of a toothpick because the first replacement broke off as well. This poor little sprite creature has been cursed. These wings have broken off twice. But you wouldn't tell that. Couldn't really tell that now. Now I think there's a little bit of a ridge there where it's glued together, but otherwise it's okay. Anyway, I'm telling that story because it's a true story that I knock these things over and they shatter. Well, hi, welcome, first time chat. Cowgirl Cooper 81. Um, these models are printed on the rosin printer, and I'm not sure exactly the composition. I don't know, maybe who knows. Uh, it, not who knows, who knows? It's almost like a, or a, I mean, a, yeah, that kind of comedy routine, but who 128 who's in chat might know the exact composition. But this is a rosin printer and they're, uh, we keep it in this enclosed and ventilated room across the hall. Uh, our dungeon tiles are made of PLA on the, PLA 3D printers behind me and I actually since you're new to this I can show you I'm going to show off dungeon tile the more I do before I start painting the less painting I have to do and the less painting I have to do the less chance there is of making a mess of it because I'm not an expert painter and I am not an expert model maker I am just an old guy filling in the time and promoting Dyson dungeons Interrupting? No, you're not interrupting at all. It's good to have somebody in chat. And, and it's, uh, I really appreciate you joining in. So these are the things that we, th this whole thing started um, because we made these dungeon tiles to use in our Dungeons and Dragons, um, our Dungeons and Dragons campaign show, which airs on Twitch three Sundays a month. Uh, with a live chat and you can also catch previous episodes of our show on YouTube and as a podcast, but we have dungeons 
which we um, thanks for the follow. Thanks so much. So the this whole this whole relaxing painting thing started because we're painting our dungeon tiles like these, um, and decided to stream it, and then then there there are mini figs that get painted as well that then show up also in our D and D show, like this one here is almost certain to show up this big fungus kind of monster thing we sometimes spend a lot of time in sewers but these are done on the pla printer back here and they're really cool because they're done as one piece floors and walls and underneath this are underneath this plate are oh thank you yeah there's just some of the things that this is one, this is another fungus monster. Anyway, these are almost certain to uh, become adversaries and almost kill us. My character in particular has a habit of being mostly dead lately. So there's those. Anyway, those are kind of nasty creatures. I just finished this basilisk. So don't look at its eyes, okay, because he'll turn to stone. Yes, I do want every excuse to delay painting, because even though this is relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons, painting is the thing I'm not very good at, really. Um, I'm good at staying between the lines. You know, when I do something like this, okay, I mean, just getting the colors on in different places and not messing them up too terribly much, I can do that. She's, that's kind of cool, right? Um, but when it comes to shading things and doing um, highlighting and stuff, I'm not all that good. So, but dungeon tiles, yeah. So these have magnets in the bottom, and so these are these are uh, they hold together, which is really cool because you don't need a metallic base. This is just a piece of cardboard. Um, you can just, um, they just very easily detach and reattach. And uh, that's how relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's magnets in the base. Isn't that cool? That was, an, that was a thing our DM came up with. Um, the, these, the models actually had little wells in the bottom that were allowed, where you could, can put those in, but actually figuring out how to get them and get them in and making them work, um, really makes for very, very good, uh, uh, dungeon tiles, because we can rearrange them any way we want. Uh, the, yes, you can after they're base paint coated. Um, pencils. I've used pencils actually for little details uh, and uh, fine tipped felt tip pens as well. But the the thing with I don't know I, the the pencils I have are like graphite kind of, and what I found is that. Um, with really, really fine detail, they kind of make dust. So, um, but I've, but yeah, you can. The thing, I'm not sure what kind of pencils you use, probably a lot of colored pencils and things, but yeah, I think pencils would work really well. There's also, I know some pencils that are almost like watercolors. I remember those from some time ago, and I think those might work really well for shading also. Probably when you're done, you'd have to put like some sort of overcoat on it, like a uh, clear, uh, maybe satin, um, or if you want a glossy, a, a varnish. Uh, otherwise, the pencils might it might rub off. But yeah, you can you can do that. Okay, um, I'm going to try to make this look sort of like this and look more like this than that, which is a style I would would be easier for me to do because it doesn't involve so much shading. But I'm going to try to make it look like this. So, um, 
I need to find some colors, right? This dark blue. We've got a, a lot of really good blues. Let me. This is my color chart. Highly sophisticated color chart. <laughs> um, well, thank you. I appreciate the compliment because I'm not all that great a painter myself, as anybody who's watched this knows from uh, experience. So. I want kind of a dark blue, this field blue, this field blue, and this medium blue. Those look like they would work pretty well for like the back. This is almost black, okay, but I want to keep it kind of in the blue range. I need to find those paints. This is sea blue. Sea blue is very dark. There's hardly any blue in that at all. So it might be okay for like highlighting. These other colors, like I showed you before, it's just this huge pile of mess. There's the field blue, so I found this color, which is pretty good. This medium blue, I don't remember ever. I don't remember seeing this medium blue for a long time. Let me see if I can find it. I did right off the top. Isn't it the? Uh, isn't it amazing? The uh, you know how just yeah. See, this is lots of paint with pencil. Mm -hmm. um, I am uh, not a professional painter. I'm not a professional painter for two reasons. One is that I'm not that good at it, and the other is I'm not getting paid. Um, so we also have a lot of oranges and reds, so I think I can, this orange fire is a little bit glossy. That might be kind of neat, like right on the edges here, because these aren't really reds. These are more like oranges. So I'm going to look for orange fire and amaranth red. Here's the amaranth, which is really quite orange. It's a little oranger than that. At my age, I've had more than enough experience with everything, including those kinds of comments. Uh, orange fire. Orange fire might be one that I've actually not pulled out of this thing. Yeah, there it is. There's orange fire. blue, medium blue. I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm making a new pile. Okay. Instead of that gigantic pile of paints over there. All right. I'm making a little pile of colors that I might want to use. So maybe I'll just move the camera here so you can see me put, um, um, you know, that's a good question about that. Um, I was thinking, <laughs> yeah, if I really knew what I was doing, I'd be able to answer that question real quickly. The, um, I think if I'm going to be trying to shade these things, I'm going to be painting it backward. It is, I think I'm going to start with these lighter colors and try to shade them in and then save the darker colors for the end like along the tops of the wings that might be painted um, like this medium blue and then tiny little bits of dry brushing which means having almost no paint at all would be painted over onto the tops like here and see this one this is an example of the feather where it says darker blue on the top and then just the feather itself is various colors Um, the oranges and yellows, these paints do not cover very well. They, they're, in some cases, they're going to actually take two, sometimes three coats. Whereas the blues like this and along the back, those cover really well. So I think I'll start with these oranges, you know, in various and sundry places because 
Um, I might have to do multiple coats. And then I'm going to try to shade the, a little bit of the, you know, each, like this up here, each layer of feathers is a different color. There's not too much shading on them, just a little bit. So I might, like, start with the amaranth red on the, the last row of feathers. And then um, maybe the orange layer after that. This, this color is hard to match. I don't want to use the yellow. It's almost a white yellow. It's almost like yellow with a white. And I might be able to do that. Like yellow with a white dry brush on top of it. Like I could use this one like this, this deep yellow. I can get over like one of these yellows. And then because it's not quite that white as this, maybe... Maybe you just put, like I could get a little, some white paint and just dry brush a little bit over it because I don't have a color that's just right for that. I could almost use something like this dark sand and put a little bit of yellow over it. I don't know, that color, it's... I just don't have that color. Um, then when it comes to the, the blues, there's sort of a this turquoise might kind of come in here a little bit. None of these other blues really work that well. There's a bright blue on the top. Yeah, I'm going to have to really play around with some things in order to, to try to make it work. Um, it's flat blue, turquoise and flat blue, I think, are two colors that I might try to use. Blue. Yeah, well, I mean, what I really... What I really should do, if I were, you know, knowing what I was doing, is I would take something like this, this little toy palette thing, and I would mix my own colors. Like if I wanted this color, you know, and I didn't have it, I would, I would get like a real painter, right? I would get out like a, this, maybe this bone white that might work better than the dark sand. I might get out like this bone white color, put a little bit in there, and then mix it a little bit with yellow to see if I could get a color that would come close to that. But the, the problem with that is, um, you know, you might get it right the first time, but then if I have to do touch up or something later, then Ivory too. You know, the ivory color here isn't bad. In fact, yeah, I think that's that's better than the bone white. Is to try to just sort of blend those together. But the technique I'm talking about, which I uh, am not very good at doing, I'm really not is um, called dry brushing and it involves getting no paint like you put a little bit of paint on a brush and then wipe it off until there's practically no paint left and you can run it across the top of the surface and just cause it a tiny tiny little bit of, um, of color on it Okay, well, I kind of picked the colors. Here's another one I'm going to try to use. I 
talked about these paints here. It's got to be here somewhere. There it is. Yeah, that could, could maybe do that as well. Um... Yeah, well, the best I can do is uh, is try, right? Is start out by putting some colors on and see how it goes. And, you know, if they don't look very good, maybe try something else. Need a fairly small brush. Maybe this one, maybe this one. Yeah, well, I guess I need to get going here. I need to uh, do some relaxing painting at some point. This is a really, really cool print. I'm hoping that I do it justice. Buy something. I'm gonna try. I'm, I'm actually going to try something um, that might might work. I'm gonna put because because these paints tend not to cover very well. Okay, they um, they need multiple coats. I'm actually going to try to layer the colors a little bit. So the worst thing that can happen is that this is a huge mess and the model just needs to be tossed and started over. The next worst thing is that it's not a huge mess, it's just sort of a mess. And I didn't put so much paint on that the detail is lost and I can just repaint the primer, put the gray primer back on. That could happen. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm taking this sort of orangish yellow color. It's kind of close to this. And I'm going to use it as a base coat on top of the primer. And then I'm going to use this darker red this darker orange and this lighter orange and paint those colors on top of it. Paint up to the second row of feathers. This is not at all the color it's going to end up being, I hope. It's not supposed to be anyway. There in fact should be maybe two different layers of color between here and there. Nicole, who is actually a real artist, trained as an artist and art historian, knows about these different, you know, using different colors as base coats and um, using and then applying different layers on them to get different effects. So she should actually be doing this one. But, um, but I am instead. Oh my. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally not there. That's what I did. As you can see, it's kind of translucent. It's not covering totally, which is what I want, because I'm going to have at least two, possibly three um, layers of paint on those feathers.
But I want to see how it looks. It might, it might come out okay. The kind of nice thing about paints, more or less, kind of, kind of a nice thing about paints is that as long as they're not on too thick, you can just keep painting over and over and over. You know, and I've, I've been, I've read that, like the old masters, right? I mean, or any real professional, really good painter will, will do that. We'll just paint over things, sometimes just even changing the whole picture. So I guess it's okay if I, you know, I don't like what I see and I paint over it. Remind myself that when I get up to the tops of these wings, I'm going to um, be getting into greens and blues. So if this works, I'll probably use this color and push it up to the third, maybe even the whole wing. I might even end up painting the whole wing this base color and then using other colors on top of it. To show the, the shading. See how this works first. So when you use pencils, do you use like shades of gray graphite pencils? Do you use like the watercolor pencils? I'm curious about what what you how you what you use. When I was when I was very young and I thought I had some artistic talent, which I didn't. Um, liked working with pencils because of the precision. They, um, you know, they didn't get away from me, and I don't know. I just. I like the way they looked. And I, I paint. I drew a couple of things, and then I realized I wasn't very good at it, and sort of gave it up. But I did like working with pencils a lot, the colored pencils. I think, actually, I have to admit this. I think I still have the box of colored pencils I used when I was in grade school, which was a very long time ago. I would have kept those. But I think I might have. Yeah, so the... I think things done in graphite can look really good. The, um... Just need to be careful with the surface so you don't just smear it around a little bit. Um, so these tail feathers here, these feathers are this color also. So is there anything in particular you like to draw? Oil paints are really a challenge. I'm not sure I would even give that a go. These these are acrylics, water-based paints, which are kind of nice. But like I said, if I were, you know, if I were a real painter, me like a master modeler trying to turn this into like a display piece. I would be custom mixing the colors 
with starting with really kind of basic colors and mixing them. And I think, you know, with graphite, you can get really cool kind of shading and things. It can get look really nice. These little bits of feathers here should be this color too. The nice thing about these acrylics too is they dry pretty quickly, so if I'm going to be layering colors, I don't have to wait like a, a day. Do the next one. Some printing flaws on there, but it's it's in the back, so I don't think that's too bad. <clears throat> oh, yeah, pastels would work. Actually, pastels would work really well. Again, you have to be a little careful when you're done so you don't, like, flake it off, right? But I think, um... When I was working with, with pencils, I saw... You know, I was, I was in grade school, I was pretty young. Um, saw somebody, a TV show with someone working in pastels. And those, those were, I found really compelling. But I wasn't able to control them very well. You know, just in terms of getting, laying the color down and shading, but. I think those, I think that would work pretty well. Paint, start painting the tips of the feathers. I'm going to use the darker orange, the amaranth red, and I'm going to be starting at the tips because I want those to be the darkest. And then kind of letting up and trying to shade the color into, into this. And if this works, I really should probably I might have to go back and forth a couple of times. I probably should use this as the base color on the entire wing and then apply the other colors on top of it, including the blues and the greens. But I think this, you know, it's, it's a little darker. Yeah, and then there's spots I missed. Should look at it, make sure I didn't miss too many spots. No, yeah, I'm not sure how this will go, but I'll find out soon. But yeah, uh, uh, I think a mixed media artist would really do a good job of, of shading and things with other kinds of things. I think pastels Pastels would actually work better than pencils in, in terms of doing the shading. Because you could apply the color, it'd be like dry brushing in a sense, but um, maybe a little more easily controlled, a little more fluid. And like you said, if you use the sponge to, um, to get the colors on, Clean the brush and I'm finding spots that I missed. This is a, do I use a little brush? I'm going to keep using this size brush. The small brush, I just get dots of paint and what I want are like feathers flowing.
hoping that this is that this will be red enough. If not, I can always get a darker red and uh, touch the tips of the feathers. But I'm going to just try this. Let's start at the big one here. See what color this turns into as it dries. So my intent then is to take the, the lighter orange color, depending on how dark this gets when it dries, and pick up after that. up doing just at the very tips of these things getting a little bit darker red and um, touching the tips of the feathers although this color is not too bad It's kind of it's kind of a nice color. I'm not sure I want to mess with it very much. But what I am finding, and after I get this get get this going a little bit further, is that I do want to use that kind of beige paint as the base coat on the entire wing. Where a lot of it will actually end up showing. painted some campfires and fire traps before and um, this is a little bit like that you know in that the wings are kind of like fire in that they get from the darker to lighter and then they shade later but the colors aren't limited to the feathers as much as they are just you know, kind of shading from one to the next. After I'm done painting this color on, before I start shading other colors in, I'm going to paint the rest of the wing that base coat. 
Um, yeah, I will be on for another hour before I take a break about noon Eastern time. And then I take about a half hour break and then come back and go until about two. So thanks for joining in. Thanks for becoming a follower. Really appreciate it. And I appreciate you ch joining in in chat. Thanks so much for doing that. See you soon. This might turn out okay. Let's see what happens. There's like four more, four or five more colors to go, and hopefully they'll, you know, glow together. But that beige color makes a good undercoat because the um, if this orange were being applied to the right to the primer, it it really wouldn't look very good because the gray would show through. So after getting this orange on, I'm going to paint the rest of the wing beige you know, so that the undercoat, you know, it's just going to be the undercoat on the whole thing. And there might be a few places where it just shows through, I'm not sure. about today I don't know you know I've just I've done I've done Tom Derivic I've done Mr. Head talked about theme shows talked about turning on the TVs in the 1950s 20 minutes before the show starts at least 10 so that you could warm it up and tune it in talked about that um yeah I'm just just you know get like a year or something into this and then start running out of stuff to talk about I could talk about you know get into the 80s and 90s and things but that isn't very interesting because that was just like I'm going to work I get up in the morning and Clear the snow off of the car. If it's in the garage, didn't have to do that. That was good. Eventually, you ended up getting a attached garage, which was a wonderful invention. I didn't didn't appreciate it until we we had one. Because for a long time, the car was just parked outside, and uh, you know, getting snowed on was. <clears throat> an ordeal in the morning.
Anyway, yeah, I could talk about that, but, um, you know, then commute, go to work, do work, commute back home. Sometimes the commute was easy, sometimes it was hard, sometimes the weather was bad, sometimes the traffic was bad, sometimes there was not no problem at all, and it just went very smoothly, and that just isn't very interesting. Hmm. I can't talk about politics, you know, because I want to make sure that everybody who watches Relaxing Painting with Dyson Dungeons is relaxed because, you know, some things aren't relaxing. Um, I don't know, talking about nuclear Armageddon concerns in the 1960s probably isn't really relaxing either, but it was such a long time ago, it's just, it doesn't have that same kind of uh, effect that it did at the time. Like who would win in a fight? Okay. There's that. And what we're talking about here, we're talking about who would win in a fight between the mascots of uh, American U.S. baseball teams. That would be kind of, that's kind of a fun thing. I actually did this once. It actually, it helps, it helps when you do this with wine, you know, like a glass of wine afterwards, it makes it more fun, but, you know, you just have to deal with it sober. Um, so, like, who would win in a fight? The Cardinals or the Tigers? be a good battle right you would think well the tiger would definitely win mm -hmm. but then think about um, the tiger having to catch the card you know and the cardinal's pretty quick and swift and can just I'm getting a mug of coffee here could just fly off and never be caught and so who would win that way it probably, I don't know, it could end up being a draw. The Cardinal would keep taunting the Tiger. And the Tiger would make a, a run and a, and a jump, right? And try to pounce on the, on the Cardinal, but the Cardinal would fly away. And eventually they'd get tired. You know, one of them might make a mistake, but you can't really tell which one. You know, the, it's unlikely that the Cardinal could outright win unless it was able to exhaust the Tiger to the point of frustration. And it just said, I'm just so exhausted, I can't go on any longer. I mean, that potentially could happen. There's a chance that the Tiger could catch the Cardinal, in which case the winner would be pretty obvious. The Cardinal would be in deep trouble if a Tiger caught it. But, you know, that's the kind of battle that you could have. There are lots of birds. Okay, you got Cardinal, Oriole, Blue Jay, base coating this whole thing this kind of beige color because I think I can shade the other colors onto it pretty well it makes a good base coat for these different colors I'm not doing the body yet I'm not quite sure I mean I probably could be base coating the body this color too but I'm really not sure how that's going to go
I mean, so you could have bird fights. What are there? Cardinals, Blue Jays, Orioles, are there any other birds? I'm not remembering any other birds right off here. Knowing the birds as much as I do, which isn't all that much, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess that, you know, the blue jay is probably gonna have the advantage over the others, just because of its size and reputation for being like aggressive. So, like, who would win in a fight among the baseball birds? Probably the blue jay, but he couldn't be sure. There's one team um, I mean might be able might beat them all depending on depending. It's the uh, the angels, okay I mean you're coming up against this celestial being. I would think that nothing would stand a chance. But on the other hand, it's an angel, right? So why would it be trying to beat other people? It would be trying to, you know, you would think that an angel would be trying to get like major reconciliation or something going on and that you wouldn't have a fight to begin with. So there's a conundrum. You know, would the angel use its power to win the fight or would it just avoid having a fight because it's an angel? No. And you got, you know, other things. You got a, you got the brewers. If you just had a, I don't know. It depends on whether the brewers drink their own, drink their beer or not. You know, they might, they might really be good in a brawl if there was, if the fight was a brawl kind of fight against almost anything. Like they might fight, the Brewers might take on the Cubs. You know, you'd think that the Cubs would have an advantage, you know, because they're little bear, bears, but they're little bears. They're little bitty baby bears. And depending on whether they were teenage Cubs or not, I don't know when you stop being a Cub. That might be a, that might be an issue. Um, There was one battle, one battle that everybody was pretty sure would be the least fun, the least fun to watch. And that would be the Red Sox versus the White Sox. It was what you would have is you just have some socks laying there in the field. That's just socks. There you go. What do you do with that? So this actually looks a, looks a little bit like that. I'm kind of surprised. I mean, it looks a little bit like that. I'm going to then shade. I'm going to shade this orange fire just a little bit in this next row of feathers okay um and then i'm going to take ivory to make it lighter like this color and then i'm going to start putting aquamarine just layering some aquamarine on it and then um use i think medium blue along the top We'll just let's just see how this goes. I'm going to be trying to feather the colors in, and there's going to be one, two, three, maybe four colors between here and here. I'll let this dry a little bit longer. Um, So if this next one works, that'll be 
that'll be a success. That was redundant, wasn't it? If it's successful, it'll be a success. If it works, it's successful. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty lame. The body color is much darker. Okay, the body color is like field blue and shading into uh, medium blue, shading into a little bit, maybe turquoise, I'm not sure. But I'm just gonna, I'm just messing with the wings right now to see, see what I can get, what I can do. I want this next application to be almost dry brushed on, okay? I want it to kind of blend from this into the next color. I don't know if I'll be successful in this or not. I don't really want a lot of this. It's a transition kind of color. It's a little bit glossy, which might be okay. Um, Start here at the big feathers. Let's just see what it does. Pretty good against the base coat. About this far because I can layer other colors on top of it. Bit almost like a glaze on top of the darker orange. No, I don't know if it's great, but it's, you know, for me, it's not bad. I think it's a good transition color. It's a little oranger than, than that, um, but, but not too bad. Quite sure what color to do next, though. You know, the next color actually comes is kind of like the the undercoat color. I think I'm going to try ivory, though, just you know, to make it lighter, and then the ivory will kind of start blending into the 
Amen. Damn it. Uh, okay, that was bad. It fell off. I don't know how much of it survived. Looks like it looks like it's all there. Jeez. Okay, I guess I need to be careful. The uh it fell fell off of the holder. And I need, okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to have to hold the whole thing up um, more over the work surface. Because if it falls off again, I do not want it tumbling onto the cement floor like it just did. That was, wow, that was bad. This is really fragile stuff. I mean, it's, it was a very high likelihood that uh, that would have resulted in multiple pieces just falling off. Mm. Kind of shocking that it didn't. So call that the miracle of the day for sure. back the wings in the back are going to be darker than the ones in the front so they'll end up being probably more blue and dark blue on that so it gets near the, the edge near the leading edge of the wing Well, that was, uh, yeah, this thing falling off was an unexpected and really disturbing event. I'm hoping that doesn't repeat itself. I might have to just, like, push it down every now and then just to be sure. The color selection, I guess, so far has been working. This orange blends. The picture here is more orange and yellow than it is uh, red. So I think that's working okay. bit of a lighter color up into the darker color. It doesn't really lighten it very much. It just sort of 
brings the colors together. I'm going to have to let this dry a little bit. This one isn't drying really fast. Um, let it dry a little bit before I start with the next color, which will be ivory. So it's going to be a little bit of a transition here into a much lighter, a lighter color before the greens and blues start forming. So the tops of the wings, the edge of the wing is going to be um, one of the blue colors. I have to find it again. There's going to be a little bit of aquamarine as a transition color. I think it's, yeah, it's medium blue that, I, that I'm going to end up using. Badge. Anyway, it's, uh, you know, it's not quite the same as this. It's, uh, the, these colors are nice and subtle, but it's not too bad. Starts to look once the, the blues and the greens start coming in. But the next color is ivory, which is this lighter color. And that's going to be another sort of transition color. It's going to try to blend it in. There's going to be more blue and, and, and dark blue on this than um, on the picture. I think I'll end up with a little bit more blue in it. That might be okay. have to be perfectly dry because I want it to blend a little bit but yeah we'll give it a go now and get the, stir this up and see what happens This is a quite a light color. It's almost white. We use it instead of white a lot because it's got a little color in it instead of just stark white. It's going to be pretty light on here. So I'm not really sure how this is going to go. Let's find out. I may end up having to do is um, too much of it there. I'm gonna have to come back. I, it's working better if I'm just sort of dry brushing it. Here.
Now see, just a little too much paint on that. Where it's dry brushed, it looks better, but that's the problem with dry brushing is and starting out with the right amount of paint on the brush. Like there. That, that's really kind of the look I was trying to go for. So it's kind of highlighting on top of the base coat rather than covering it. I'm going to do is I want this white to go all the way up to the top so that when the blues come on it's going over it. I have to do some layering on parts of this. There, there are certain sections of the wings, okay? Like this came out really pretty well on this side, but here there's too much, it just didn't. So I'm gonna get the yellow orangish back again and try to direction, you know. And, in, and keeping in mind that this is going to transition into kind of a bluish color. Not too bad, really. Yeah, I mean, if it were, if that were the end of it, it wouldn't be all that great. But 
I need to get that little bit of blue in there yet. Really little bits of blue. Be careful with that. Like right on the edges of the wing, that's going to be dark. I mean, that's fine. It's this transition here between the dark blue on the top and underneath here. That's going to be a little bit tricky. And I'm hoping the aquamarine works. You might have to brush the white back up on top of the aquamarine. That might work. Let's get a little bit of the aquamarine on there, and then I might have to dry brush this ivory back on top of it to make the transition work better. Yeah, this paint really doesn't mix well. See what it came out there? It's it's uh, the dark blue. That's the uh, there isn't enough pigment in it. This one just separates between the pigment and the solvent. Although that color is probably closer to what I want than what I'm going to end up getting here. whatever reason this develops bump of paint across the top okay I'm going to um, mix these two together And I'm going to start at the top of the wing, because that's going to be darker blue anyway. I want just the slightest bit to come down. Yeah, that's not too bad. The top of the wing is going to be dark blue. This is just supposed to bring like a hint, a hint of blue down onto the wing. That's the wing.
more of it in the back. Just flat. And then the dark blue along the top of the wing. And then and then um I'm gonna probably take a break after that. Yeah, so you can see I mean there's this bright spot on the top, but that's gonna be the, the really dark blue like this. This isn't turning out exactly. Well, I'll show you in a minute. Let me sh get this glue on. This is supposed to be really quite dark, and hopefully it will. We'll kind of finish the wing here. Thank you. 
Okay, so I'm looking at this. This just needs more blue here somehow. Maybe I'll just do this. Bring the darker color down. You think that'll work? I'm going to have to put a little bit more aquamarine in here. That dark blue, I think, it, it looks okay. It kind of finishes it okay. So, so the white spot up here. Yeah, I know, I went silent there. I hope the music's playing okay. Because I'm just trying to do little bits of touching up here. To decide what to do with the body after I'm after break. Say, this came out Okay, you know, it's not, like I said, I'm not a professional painter. If I were, it would look a lot more like that. It would look all like, light and feathery and everything. But, um, yeah, I mean, you can see the comparison. Clean the brush and then, um, off and break and then come back and then work on the body the body is really quite dark okay so it's going to be like this medium blue and an even darker blue over that over parts of it and then uh, try to do a lot of highlighting up here on the face as much as I can but <clears throat> What I can do for you is I can show you, okay, this is what I was sort of going for. This is the alternative, okay. Put them next to each other like this. And I think, I think I managed to get closer to this than, than to this. I think I... You know, it's really not too bad. It's not too bad. It's just, for me, it's pretty, for me, it's pretty good. So I'm going to um, come back and try to, you know, do the body. There's a uh, beige underneath again. I'm just going to paint that, you know, as much as I can. And then I want to get a blue, this You know, I think I'm going to try some things, um, some test, some tests before I paint it. And I have an idea that might work. Because I don't really have a nice deep blue like that. Try this now, I'm going to... Uh, Put down 
we're breaking and these will dry and then I'm going to after break some things like a like a dry brush on top of it to try to get this nice blue color it's the medium blue okay and this is the field blue Field blue, the one I want. The blue, let me check real quick here. This is much darker even. This is a field blue. What I'm going to try to do, what I'm going to test is flat blue and aquamarine and Bead paint there's an overcoat on these to see if I can get this kind of glistening kind of thing there's actually even a third option I don't know how it would look Lesser paint. As well, just to see to see what happens. Um, I think that's gonna be okay as a base. These actually come together pretty well. But I'm gonna let these dry and I'm gonna take a break. Um, be back about 12:30-ish Eastern time. And then work on the body and then uh, depending on how it goes probably spend some time on the the head and the face just to do some highlighting on that but I'm going to declare the wings not too bad the wings are not too bad all right and then um, get this kind of this darker and then lighter put the maybe put the darker on first and then the little lighter over it but I'm going to try some um, especially the speed paint and the and the pearl paint to see if I can just give it a little glossiness just a little bit on the back I think that would be kind of cool so I'm going to leave this here and go take a break because at some point one does need a break okay i'll be back roughly 12 30 eastern time hi welcome back um you got back just in time for me to go on a break but let me show you there, i got the wings done there's the front and the back and they kind of look like that they kind of look like that I think it came out all right. And what I'm playing with now is what to do with the body color. So this is, I'm trying to emulate that. So I've got these two colors, which I think kind of, if they were blended together, I think that would work. But after break, I'm going to um, try some overcoating to see if I can give it a little bit of glisten, like this. So I've got this pearlescent paint that I could use um, I'm going to try it on there as a, like a dry brush just to see if I can just make it glow a little bit. And some speed paint that might give it a little bit more contrast. 
um, the body itself right here on the chest part. See this part here? Um, uh, I'm going to use this, this tan paint that I used as the undercoat on the wing. I'm going to be painting it from the neck down to about here because there's just this light area here um, that that needs to be there. You know, let me see how that looks. But at this point, um, I think it, you know, given my skill level, on one to ten scale, I'm like a oh, five point seven or something. Um, Let's see how it goes. How did I manage to get paint on the chin? Look at that. Hmm. That was one of those getting the paint to and from the work. Just smashed it. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm going to just play with these a little bit because the body is mostly these really dark blues except for the chest area here where it's kind of blended in. And then the, the head here, that'll be kind of a challenge to try to get it to look a little bit like that, you know, so it's just popping out. So, yeah, I'm going to take a break. I'll be back in, like, uh, I always say I'll be back in a half hour, and then I take 40 minutes, but I'll do my best to get back by 12.30. And thanks for joining in, and I hope you uh, hang in or come back in a half hour to see what happens next. Well, back. And, uh, yeah, under five minutes late. So for me, that's actually pretty good. So I'm working on this Quetzalcoatl, and it's coming along okay. You know, I think it's, you know, it's not perfect, but and it's not a display model. But if we encounter it in our show, in our Dungeons & Dragons show, I think it would, it would appear to be okay on camera. Um... This is the model I've been, or the color scheme I've been trying to work with. Now I need to work on the body. So part of it will be painting the chest and the chin here, this base beige color, but the rest of it, um, other than the spikes on the top, which will be uh, tinged with this orange reddish orange color um, is this combination of dark colors so I'm going to try to like put this down and shade it with this other one but I am also trying to see if I can get this like glint this this glint of brighter color and there's two things I want to try I'm just going to try them one is um, a pearlescent paint to see how it looks on there as like a wash and the other is speed paint a speed paint that might just you know blend it a little bit the the issue with both of these is that especially the speed paint is one cannot paint over the speed paint okay the speed paint um dissolves again It liquefies when um, touched by any other paint. And so if it goes on, it's got to go on and stay on. So I'm just painting it over. See what it looks like. And that's actually not too bad. Um, especially when applied on this lighter gray, uh, blue. So if I painted the dark and then shaded this in, the speed paint overlay gives it just a little hint of kind of uh, that shiny blue that's almost, that's pretty close to the effect I was hoping for. So I could cover the whole thing in speed paint. 
see what the pearlescent looks like. This is very viscous. It comes out almost like a gel. Whenever I try to get like a small amount of it, I end up getting a big amount of it because it doesn't come out and then it splats out. There's a nice ring. nice and lucky. I'm just looking at doing the same thing basically as over as a top coat. It's just kind of a really light wash. And it doesn't, you know, the speed paint works better. I mean, in certain lights this gives a I have another color of speed paint that might work a little better. I might as well try it. Um, yeah, the problem with the speed paints and with this pearlescent is you can't paint over it. So the, <laughs> if I were to use the speed paint, I would make sure I got the, the base layers um, in and then the speed painted over it and that would be it couldn't really do anything more to it what speed paint is is there's two levels of pigment in it and when it works it's really commonly used in in miniature in modeling um, because it is it's speedy what it does is it creates shading by just painting. Um, so it's hard to describe exactly, but the, it's got the, uh, the solvent is pigmented and then there's pigment in it. And the way it's supposed to work is that the lighter on the top and the, the solvent, the darker colored solvent seeps into uh, the crevices. Like if there's a scale pattern like this, the speed paint would be lighter on the top and darker in the crevices so that it basically gives the effect of dry brush shading um, by just painting it, by just putting one layer of paint on it. And if it works, it actually works really quite well and quite quickly. I have had some success with it, but not very much. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting it right. It's designed to be painted over a, a light colored base. Okay. <coughs> um, a light, like, uh, like an ivory colored, ivory colored uh, base coat or primer so that it shows in this case i'd be using it on top of something dark and it's just to give it a blue hint and it actually works pretty well the pearlescent paints the pearlescent paints are just too shiny uh, compared to the rest of it which is a little too bad because i, I kind of like the pearlescence there's two kinds of there's multiple kinds of speed paint the kind we have um, liquefies when it's painted over so if I were to paint something and then didn't like it and speed painted it and then paint it over again, the speed paint would dissolve inside the paint. And that might produce an effect that we'd like, but um, they also make a kind that doesn't liquefy. It's just got a different kind of solvent in it. And we should probably invest in that sometime. But as I said, I've, I've never had much success with the speed paints, maybe because the areas being painted are too small. I'm not sure. Or maybe I just don't know what I'm doing. It could be that too. So the, the, um, 
the body, as I'm looking at this, other than the chest here, you know, where it kind of fades in and out, I'm going to paint that the uh, that kind of beige color, starting at the chin and then going down, and there's just going to be um, a patch of that. Okay, and then I'm going to be painting. I'm going to paint the the outside of the body, you know, all around and everything else. The um, why did I put it away? This dark gray color, dark bluish gray. Uh, I think that's the field blue. Yeah, and then kind of shade in over the top of it, the um, medium blue, okay? And then speed paint over that, all the way up to about here. What I'm gonna end up doing here, I don't really know, around the head, uh, probably use like ivory, just highlight it as much as I can. And then these, these things here are actually here. Um, Probably going to base paint these that color as well, and then use the same technique I used here with uh, the inside being kind of this this orange color, and then um, aquamarine and highlight with white. I don't know if I'll end up getting to the face. That's gonna. This is gonna be a yeah a thing. If I knew what I was doing, it would be easier. But, you know, as I've said, I don't. So, um, but what I can start with is cleaning the brush here. Some, some sort of paint, one of the blues, either the pearlescent or the speed paint is staying in this brush and not coming out. Um, I'm just going to take a minute. I have some denatured alcohol. Oh yeah, reach reach over and knock that down. That would be a good thing. I could. I could use the that dark sand I was talking about for the head. At the rate I'm going today, I think I'm going to end up doing most of the head and the face. I think that's going to end up being next week. What happens during relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons is I know that this is the case, and anybody who's been watching this for any amount of time knows that as I near the 2 o'clock mark, starting in about 45 minutes at about 1.30 Eastern time, is I actually just start to lose focus. Just do. And at that point, I it's, um, it's not a good time for me to be doing really highly detailed work like the, like the head. So what I'm probably going to end up doing today is just the body. I think I can get the, the, the little fins on the back. Okay, I can do those with the orange overlay on top of the blue because they're kind of dark. But then the whole head, the head and the face is going to require um, going to require more focus than I am able to give it <clears throat> at that time of the stream. I just have to be honest with myself. It just I start bumping things with the brushes, I knock things over. It's kind of amusing, I imagine, but... Um, <laughs> but it just doesn't make for very good painting. Yeah. So what could I say? Just... But relaxing painting goes from more or less 10 until more or less 2 on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I will be doing all three days next week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but then 
the week after next, I'll be taking off because I will be taking off or doing a family trip. So I will be away and not being here, I will be unable to um, do relaxing painting. So I have to, don't have to be too terribly careful with the boundaries of this base layer here because I'll be painting into it. This is just here. I'll be painting into it from either side. So I want to kind of get, just get it. This brush became incoherent. All the bristles went everywhere. I just want to get it kind of where it's going to go. It's kind of like that. Okay. I'm going to start with the darker color, I think. Yes, I'm going to need a better brush. This brush might work. I might even have to go with a tiny brush. Some of these, some of these spots, like around here, I, don't know, I think this brush might work. It is the back of it. Okay the up side of it all around. I'm going to be painting that really dark color, including the spines, because I'm going to be putting the orange color over the dark color. And then I'm going to take some of this, this lighter medium blue and painting it on the The darker blue, yeah, the lighter blue is on the top, actually, so I need to be painting the darker blue kind of on the bottom. The edges, and then the lighter blue, I want to kind of shade into it as much as I can, up to about here. And then I'm going to take the, uh, and I'm going to paint the, the little, bikes on the back, probably this darker orange. <sighs> yeah, okay, sorry about that. There we go. That's one of the things I tend to do, unfortunately, is get off screen, especially when the camera is down lower. I'm just talking to myself, trying to figure out how, how these colors are supposed to work. It looks like the top of it is the darker blue, but then as you get to here, you now the lighter blue just kind of comes underneath and up. Um, yeah, I'm gonna paint the whole thing dark blue. I'm gonna paint the whole thing dark blue and then put the lighter blue on top as kind of a, a dry brush. Um, accent and then use the speed paint like this to give it a lighter bluish color I hope it works I don't know we'll find out huh Well, painting it the dark color and then putting, yeah, because of the scaly pattern, it might work pretty well to use the lighter color as sort of a dry brush uh, technique to emphasize the, the tops of the scales in certain areas. Right around here, I'm going to, right around the tail here. I'm going to be pulling out a really small brush and using my 2x, my two times head magnifiers uh, because the light in my vision are neither bright enough nor clear enough 
by themselves to let me see to get the paint in the right places. So painting a large surface area like this, but you can see by like getting around these little feathery things. I'm going to need um, magnification and more light and a much finer brush. That work. And the main issue I need to be careful of here with this color is um, bringing the brush up to and away from the, the surface I'm painting so I don't bang it into an already painted area. That's that's my most common oops is not is, is maybe painting carefully but not getting to and from the work surface carefully. And then all of a sudden there's a dark blue blot right across the wing. And when it's shaded like that, me fixing it would be a, a problem. So Hopefully, I'm hopeful that I will be able to avoid that. Let's see if I'm successful. There's a lot of surface area on the body. It's all twisty and. pattern on it. It's the kind of thing where I could very easily miss big sections of it. Yeah, it should teach me how to do that. What I've done sometimes I mean, I actually have done this because I keep wandering off camera is I will like on this uh, cardboard that I have underneath, I'll put like a splotch of paint or an X or something so that when I'm looking down instead of up at the monitor, when I'm looking down at the thing I'm painting, I can see where I'm supposed to be. In this case, I'm supposed to be right over the tail of the picture underneath, which is probably distracting. Okay, so I want the boundary here to be I want it to be like in this sort of indistinct. I don't want it to be like a, just a. I'm just, I'm just sort of dabbing it here. I want it to be a little bit. Um, not not just a clean line, but. Ragged. Okay, well, it's sort of coming along okay.
paint it up to about that far. That's the whole, the, the head that will need to be done next week because I'm not going to have enough focus to be able to do it yet today, but I am getting the base coat on and it's, it's, it's okay. So, as age comes on one, eyesight gets a little wonky. So, the problem for me is that I'm very nearsighted, which means that I can see about six or eight inches away, and that's about it before it gets fuzzy. And then I have these trifocals, which are supposed to give me um, good focus at different distances but they're different parts of the lens. And the up-close part is the very, very bottom of the lens. Yeah, come back on Wednesday for Submarine Wednesday. A totally different experience because I'm working on a, not like a minifig, but a submarine model. And it's getting close to being done. I'm trying to get this, the body, um, all covered with this dark blue paint. Okay. And then, except for the head and this little bit on the chest, that's a, that's a lighter color. Because the head is going to be a different kind of experience and then I'm going to use a lighter colored blue to do some highlighting of the scales and then I may or may not use the speed paint overlay You'd be rotating. Oh, yeah, I need to get the little brush and my head magnifiers out so I can paint this bit. This is where I, I rotate this and say, oh, I missed a spot. Oh, I missed a spot. Oh, I messed up that spot. But right now it's just in the, oh, I missed a spot stage. Just trying to find the spots I missed. When I put the head magnifiers on, I'm, I'll see all sorts of flaws that I can't see this way. There is an advantage to having poor vision. As things look better than they are. Okay, well, this brush is done. That stayed mostly on camera, didn't it? The submarine? Huh. The sub, yeah, the sub is really close to being done, which means that it'll be never finished, right? It's like, it's, it's I don't know, there's an old joke about restoring cars. Antique cars are always restored 95%. Yeah, you can use that. Ex you can try. It's always worth trying that excuse. Okay, these these are really geeky things, right? The, these have magnifying lenses that go on the front. And there's this little light, bright light there. The 
anyway, when I put these on and I look through them and I find a way to focus, I can um, we can see things better than I can than I can otherwise, and this lets me use a little tiny brush. get the paint around these these feathers and I can't do this without these magnifiers because I just can't focus that well this also let me see all the flaws in the paint that's been applied so far like if there's any spots that are really badly missed. I'm also going to use these to paint the spikes on the back. I think these little feathers here, these little side feathers, sort of half, I think they need, they need, an, they need a little of the dark red on them. And that's the color I'm going to use on the spines on the back, so I'll just put some on there too at the same time. Well, not at exactly the same time. I can't because that would be like painting in two places simultaneously. But while that color paint is out, I will use it also. And these little feathers here to give them a redder highlight. I can some, sometimes it's fun to get really literal. You know, it's kind of fun for the person becoming very literal. It's really annoying for everybody else. But I do it pretty often because I find it kind of fun and I think everybody else finds it annoying, which is kind of cool. Okay. Um, you know, it doesn't look too bad. Well, I'm going to have to decide if I want... I think I'm going to put the, the highlights, the lighter, the lighter blue highlights. I think I'm going to put those across the top. Try that anyway. I'm going to try dry brushing that lighter blue color just on the scales along the top, like along here. Okay, like that. But this dark blue actually looks pretty good good by itself even. You know, and if dry brushing the highlights doesn't work, then um, I can just repaint it this color. It's only after I put the speed paints on that I am now then going to be limited because I can't repaint it. I think it's going to be safe. Because it kind of looks like these back spikes here. You know, blue on them. Yes, that's, thank you, Hu. That's actually true. Is uh, at this point when I'm focusing up close, you know, with these these magnifying lenses, that's the time if you want to, uh, you know. I can look up. I can look up, but I just can't really read it. 
<coughs> even the large print version of chat there's a little small print version of chat which is right in front of me because i have a monitor that kind of shows what's going on um is just white lines raggedy little white lines on a black background and then i have a large print version over to the side which was set up for me to be able to see without glasses but even that isn't large print enough um which tells you kind of what i'm working with here so let me stir this paint up this is the color i used on the used it on the top of the wings i think it'll look okay on here if i do it very sparingly and carefully so i'm looking at this just as i'm about to move on i'm seeing you know i'm rotating the work and as i rotate it i'm seeing spots that that were missed up at the top here painting the head but these these aren't on the head they're away from the head they need to be painted this color because that's the the base coat Yeah, like I said, the downside of these is being able to see all the really significant flaws. Like there's a, a whole section here on the base of the tail that I didn't paint. that time yeah. okay well yeah that's the kind of thing that happens good thing the brush was just cleaned and not covered with paint but I, you know was gonna go over here to clean it you just saw that up close uh, I was just taking the brush over to the paper towel here and knocked it right over <laughs> yeah. so after one o'clock you know as we get into the final hour of this that's the time when those kinds of really exciting oopses are more likely than not um, okay, I'm going to put the paper towel here because I'm going to try dry brushing. Okay, which means I'm not using a little palette thing for this because these paints are not in the squeeze bottle, they're in the jar. So I want to get most of the paint off. And I'm going to start back here. What I do is just catch catch the tops of the scales with this paint. But they look a little bit lighter. And the body color, and I'm not terribly concerned about the spikes, because those are gonna be, this brush just came apart. I can't use it. The, what I mean by that is that the bristles unbristled. They debristled. I'm going to try this. This is much bigger and stiffer, but it might work better. This brush is actually good for dry brushing because then the bristles remain more near the surface of the thing being painted.
the color is going on kind of subtly, but it's actually working. And I'll show it up to you close. You can see, see the lighter color on the tops of the scales there. And that's what I'm, I'm hoping to do. This is coming along okay, and it, and the colors are good enough that I don't think, I don't think I need to need to resort to the. Um, the speed paint, because I think the colors are okay. It's the combination of this lighter and the darker. And the spikes on the back are getting a lot of this paint in them, but I, that's all right because they're going to be they're being painted over with the orange paint. And the orange paint, the bright orange paint, is kind of translucent, so being applied to a really dark background, I think I think that will work. Dang, on screen, that's pretty good. Actually, it's... Hi, Hola. Thanks for joining in right near the end. Um, say hi, and this is uh, Quetzalcoatl, and it's not bad. It's coming along as not too bad, which is actually, as you know, because you've been with us a long time, um the best one can really hope for. Yeah, there's some blue into the edges of this white underbelly, especially where it shows. So it's, it's actually not too bad. It's kind of coming along. I think the wings came out along the K and the dry brushing of this lighter blue on top of the darker blue is working in an adequate fashion. And all I need to do yet today is paint the spikes on its back. And then on Monday, I'm going to finish the face because as you can see, you can't see. Now you can see that there's a lot of detail that goes into all the little frills and things and stuff. So I'm going to do that at the beginning of a stream, not at the end of a stream. So Ole, if you've got a minute, um, the, uh, the successor, the two of you, the successor to uh, the submarine, is now down to two things the savoya i'm gonna move this up a bit so we can show them to you it's down to the savoya s21 which is porco rosa's plane from evely's porco rosa movie and the apollo so it's down to the two okay and I know that who wants the, I know it doesn't show very well, but I don't want to knock it. Anyway, yeah, it's between those two. And um, Wednesday, I'm going to make a decision. Okay, so if you'd like to join in on Wednesday, yeah. You agree on the, the Apollo? I think the Apollo would be kind of a fun kit to watch being built. You know, because it's almost like the submarine. There's just all of these little parts and 
details and things like that. It might it might be it might be a good follow up. The Savoya needs to be built though at some point, so that might be that might come after the Apollo. Okay, well, thank you for your uh, opinion, and um, I'm going to announce the su successor to the submarine on Wednesday. And we'll see it and see if there's more submarine streams left in that model yet or whether it all needs to be done off. But thank you for joining in. And we'll see you on submarine Wednesday. Okay, this dry brushing actually it actually worked out really quite well. Oh, just a second. Oh, okay. That's a call for somebody else. I thought maybe it was a call from the place that was installing or delivering the appliance, but it's not. Boy, these brushes... Okay, these brushes need an alcohol bath. The paint is not coming out. Okay, um, the last bit I'm going to do then on this one... Good luck with your stream. I hope it goes really well. Um, I don't know what we're going to call it. We're going to call it, no, we'll call it Apollo. Apollo Wednesday or Space. I don't know. We'll decide next week. I can't think of a good name. Um, submarine Wednesday made a lot of sense because I've been building a submarine. But um, if I'm going to be building an Apollo spacecraft, it doesn't make sense to call it Submarine Wednesday because um, it's not a submarine. But you, yeah, you might want to join in. Uh, let's, oh yeah, what was I going to do? I was going to use this color. And I don't know if you can see them. I try to get, yeah, you can see the spikes on the back there. They're going to be painted, just highlighted, tipped with this uh, this orange that's on the wingtips. Cowgirl, what happens is on Subcommittee Wednesday, which I've been building because it's a long story that I keep telling over and over and over again, so I won't tell it again, but so I will. So not having any minifigs or dungeon tiles to paint, I started working on old model kits that I collected when I first retired, when I thought that I would have tons of time that I ended up not having um, to do nothing but build models, so I've got a huge collection of them. And I started working on one which is uh, actually a vintage kit, vintage kits that were actually, that were really produced back in the 1960s and early 1960s. And it's a cutaway submarine, so if you can join in next Wednesday, you'll be able to see it because it's almost done. Okay, so now I want to um, get this orange paint. Yeah, I got off camera. Yeah, well, you when you, if you can see the if you want to join in on Wednesday to see the submarine, you can see why it's even though I'm only been working on it like a couple hours a week, it's taken forever because of anyway. It's a highly detailed. The interior of the submarine is highly detailed, and it's just taken forever and ever and ever to get done but it's getting really close to being finished.
most of the work that needs to be done is on the outside of the submarine now and not um we might not be able to stream that because it involves like airbrushing or spray painting and i can't do that on on camera it's, oh, this is my work area Anyway, the submarine is coming to a close, which means that it's time, you know, just keeping the tradition going of not doing D&D &D Dungeons and Dragons stuff on Wednesday. There has to be a replacement for Submarine Wednesday. And after uh, going through like seven or eight alternatives, it came down to that Savoia plane, which is a replica model of the plane from uh, Porco Rosso or the Apollo. Pretty sure I'm going to be working on the Apollo. So depending on how things go Wednesday, I mean, it might, it might be like a reveal thing, you know, those reveal parties that always end badly. I might, uh, depending on how things go with the submarine, I might open the box and start looking at the parts and see what I've gotten myself into if I start working on that one. I've opened the Porco Rosa one before because it's not wrap but the, the Apollo is still in a cellophane wrapper so I couldn't open the box until I take that off hmm I'm keeping it on camera that's pretty cool I haven't knocked it off the holder yet that's pretty good too did knock it off the holder and dropped it on the concrete floor and was very surprised that parts didn't fly off. And I'm losing, using little tiny bits of paint. Um, they dry on the tip of the brush. It's not unusual for me to have paint all over my hands, actually. What's weird about it, though, is that I get paint on my hands in impossible ways. See, I just pop, I'm gonna take it off the holder here. I just popped it off, trying to get to these. That is to say, um, like I'm using a color and I'm painting way over here and I get paint on my hands Like, you'd think I'd get paint on my fingers here, right? No, I somehow get paint up here. I don't know. I'm, I sometimes think that, that the paint kind of jumps. I think it has a life of its own. It just jumps from one place to the other. Okay, so the spikes are now this orange color. And when it dries, it dries pretty dark, which is the way I want it. And then I was going to put some, um, it's, it's just like sticky tack. Um, I don't know if I can call it anything else other than that. It's, uh, like a plastic putty sort of thing. If you've ever used something like that to attach a poster to a wall, maybe. I mean, that's the kind of thing it is. It's just, it's kind of, it's like a putty. And um, it's right now it's really old and covered in paint and needs to be replaced. And that's a recurring theme on the stream is that I um, 
I talk about things that need to be done and then I don't ever get around to doing them. Like I need to put the paints away. I need to put these paints that are all piled up over there. I need to put them in, in the paint holder. I keep saying I need to do that and then I don't. So just as I'm saying, the sticky tack on here, as you can see, it's all covered with different layers and colors of paint, which makes it less, less effective. It needs to be replaced with fresh sticky tack, and I haven't, and I just don't do it. Because after I'm done with the stream, I clean up and then then forget to do that. And then I remember it again the next time I use it. Got it. That's good. Maybe that's the installation people. I hope they actually get it done today. It would be good if this thing actually happened okay um i got some brushes i need to clean but i can do that <sighs> yeah the stream is going to end a little early today maybe but you'll get to watch me clean up brushes and stuff um so i'm going to say that this is pretty much done pretty much but not completely there's a spot there that i really don't like pretty much done except for the head and as I ex explained earlier, I'm not going to do that because that's going to require focus and steady hand beyond what I have available to me yet. So around the head here, you know, as you I'll show you in a second, I'm just trying to not spill things. that jar over that would have been exciting a big blob of blue paint that would have been really messy um you can see on here the head has all sorts of detail you know and 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 the head here follows that it's got the same sort of spiky wings that go off to the sides oh my and it's got a blob on it. Yeah, you can't really, you can maybe kind of see it, but I didn't see it until I looked at it with my head magnifiers. But right here is a blob of plastic from the, uh, printing process and there's just no there's no way I'm gonna be able to get that off I mean it's just gonna have to be there and maybe I'll paint it black or something so you can't see it but the uh, you know there's like four different colors on on the, the little frills here and I'm gonna have to try to replicate that on here and then the head is you know blue but with white highlights and the eyes and the nose need to be done so that's going to take it's going to be quite a chore painting the head and it may end up taking almost as long as it took to paint the whole body when i get to this on monday but i'm going to declare that you now there's little ones here too that need that should have come off but they're not going to Thank you. Um, so there, I'm going to declare this as much as I can get done today. And next week, Monday, starting more or less at about 10, I'm going to be starting to work on the head and trying to make it look as close to that as I can. But I think that given my skill level, and this is what I was aiming for, to make it look kind of like this it's um it's sort of it sort of does look like that yeah 
I mean, it actually sort of does. And so I am pleasantly surprised. There's, okay, head magnifiers again. What can I say when you have head magnifiers? Things you couldn't see, suddenly you can see. There's, well, thank you for joining in. And I hope if you, if you can't come in on Monday, do come in on Wednesday, because I think the wrap up of Submarine Wednesday, just as a contrast to this, would be kind of interesting. And I'd like you to see the submarine. I'd like you to see what that looks like. And, and you can imagine what it was like putting it together. Putting head magnifiers on, there's just this, um, just the edge. Okay, there was just a spot there that just did not look right at all. It's sort of the same here. It just needs. Boundary line. But thank you for coming in, joining in today, and thanks for becoming a follower. And I look forward to seeing you in chat next week. Thanks so much. Yeah, so I'm going to stop playing with this now because I just, at some point, I just start making things worse rather than better. But so far, there, as much as it's on camera, which it isn't because the paint is there, So far, I have to say that it's not too bad. That I'm going for this, and at skill level 5.7, um, you know, came fairly close. I think, given given what I was able to do and how much I did it, it's not too bad. So I'm going to finish the head on Monday, and then um, on Wednesday, submarine Wednesday. Uh, I'll be working on the last external bits of the submarine, the bow and the stern, and selecting the successor to the submarine, and maybe even doing a reveal by opening the box and taking a look at what the situation is going to be. I'm going to set this aside. This is all sorts of things in the way. I'm going to I'm setting it aside because I need to clean these brushes. And while I'm cleaning the brushes, I'm going to talk again about Dyson Dungeons. Dyson Dungeons is a group of friends and family who put on a Dungeons and Dragons show. And that's our main purpose is the D&D &D show, which streams with a live chat on Twitch three Sundays a month at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard. And it will remain Eastern Standard until daylight saving time starts, and then it'll be 2 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Amazing how that works. Um, and Relaxing Painting started as, well, we do dungeon tiles and minifigs that show up in the show. And our DM said, well, you know, if you're painting them, why don't you stream the painting? And I said, that sounds like a really dumb idea. But, you know, I'm down there doing it anyway. So the only thing that's different is that I've got this ring camera here and a microphone, and I don't have to worry about the microphone. That's just off to the side. But the ring camera, I have, you know, I, it's in the way all the time. And, and I wander, you know, the other thing is I'm supposed to keep the things I'm painting on camera. So those were the main changes, okay? Otherwise, it was just doing what I was going to be doing anyway. So yeah, minifigs like the Quetzalcoatl I'm working on now and a bunch of other things that are piled up here, some of which appear on our D&D show, is uh, why relaxing painting it is Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from more or less 10 until more or less 2, except for when there are things that get in the way, like travel or family events or just a thing appointments that must be kept. Okay, that kind of stuff. 
You want to see me cleaning the brush? This is kind of cool, right? I'm trying to get the paint out of the... I just, just absorbed the blue paint really well and it's not coming out at all. <laughs> well, thank you, cover girl. Cowgirl. Um, yeah, I'll look forward to seeing you next week and uh, finishing up the Quetzalcoatl and moving on from the submarine. It'll be uh, it'll be the paint is not coming out of this brush at all. I mean, which is I mean, in some ways it's okay. Uh, if it stays in there when I use a different color, if for some reason it like dissolves into another color, then that would be a problem. So maybe I'll use mineral spirits on this later sometime if I can't get it clean this way. Anyway, that's the story of relaxing painting. And um, Submarine Wednesday was I ran out of mini figs and dungeon tiles and started working on the submarine, which is really close to being finished and then I'll be working on something else and Submarine Wednesday will have to be renamed. We'll have a naming contest. So if you like what you see, thank you for becoming a follower. That's really terrific. If you catch it on YouTube, I think you can become what's called a subscriber and that would be great too because you can watch old ones. Like you could go back and watch um, Submarine Wednesday from a week or two ago. I think maybe even this last Wednesday. This last Wednesday was pretty cool because I finished putting the interior pieces into the inside of the submarine. It was uh, a big event. And you can catch that on YouTube. And if you really like what you see, you can go to patreon.com slash dice and dungeons dice and dungeons at patreon.com slash dice and dungeons and become a patron and if you become a patron then you can um get access to the dungeon master notes for the DD campaign and just show what i'm working on again and yeah, the thing that is being done there i can show it off kind of there we go um and also our improv warm-up sessions. So, yeah, there we are. Except for the head, which is going to take some time in order to get it, like, detailed as much as I can like this. It's like five different colors with tiny little brushes and things like that. <clears throat> um, I think, uh, you know, it's coming along okay. And if this shows up on the D&D stream, when it'll be on camera, like far away, like that, it, it'll look okay. It'll look okay. Yeah, so I'm going to wrap up a little bit early today just because um, there isn't anything much more I can do now that I finish cleaning the brushes and showing this. Just invite you back next week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from more or less 10. It was like five minutes late this morning. Um, wrapping up a little early, but you know, from 10 till 2. And we'll see the completion of the Quetzalcoatl on Monday. The wrapping up <laughs> Thank you. The um... Yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's it always is good to go on and on and on at like between 10 and 10.45 to not bother painting, but it came out okay. That's actually been the case with almost everything I've painted is that I'm not really sure what's going to happen, but they come out kind of okay. The Basilisk came out pretty mediocre, but some of the others came out okay, like the, the fungus monster. Uh, but yeah, maybe doing some wrapping up with the submarine on Wednesday and definitely... Oh, a closing flip. I can do that. Definitely choosing what will succeed the submarine and maybe even doing a reveal. So I'm going to do a wrapping up flip.
Um, paint. Look at that. Paint again. Not paint. It's two to one. Two to one paint. That means on Monday, um, unless the flipping changes dramatically, I'll be painting the head, the head of this to make it look like that. Otherwise, otherwise that's what it looks like front and back. It's pretty Quetzalcoatl, I would have to say. I have to say. Thanks for joining in. Um, have a good weekend. And I will see you hopefully on Monday and Wednesday and Friday of next week. Thank you. Thanks for joining in. See you next week.